Welcome to another video. This is your instructor Admas Kumfu from SuperSQA.com. In this video, we're going to talk about SQL. Another important tool in the QS toolbox is SQL. SQL stands for Structured Querying Language, which is a language of databases. Even though it's possible, it's, it is highly unlikely you will work with a software that does not use a database. Data have to be stored somewhere. Modern applications almost always use databases to store data. You may find older applications that use files to store information, but that's not very likely. Databases like MySQL, Oracle Database, Microsoft SQL Database are very popular databases in the industry. MySQL is owned by Oracle, so there are two from Oracle. MySQL is free, so it is the most popular, and it is pretty good. There are several databases available out there, but they use a very common language with slight differences. That is SQL. SQL is a language used to read and write information from and to a database. It is an essential knowledge for a QA person, either manual or automation. Oftentimes, a tester will have to verify information against databases. The only way to do so is run SQL queries. Thankfully, the basic syntax of SQL is not difficult to understand. It does get complicated as your needs grow, but it's rare that queries for testing get too complicated. Usually, you have the developers who have much more experience in SQL available to help you. Companies also have DBAs available. DBAs stand for database administrators. Those guys know the ins and outs of SQL. That is their primary tool. Actually, if you happen to fall in love with databases, DBA is one career option for you. So keep that in mind. Structured databases store information in a table format. They have a structure. That's why they are fast to access and easy to understand. A database contains many tables. Tables can also be grouped into schemas. So a schema is a group of tables. I'll not get into the details of the terms and features, but I do want to show you a few simple queries. As an example, let's look at a table for employees of a table. This will be a table in some database where they keep a list of employees. And the name of the, the table is employees in our case. So to simply look at it, there ha it has four, no, there's one, two, three, four, five fields, four columns. The columns are called fields usually. You have an ID field, a first name, last name, join date, which is the date the employee joined is active, if the, act if the employee is still active or not. Now, let's let's see we want to get everything in this table this will be a sql query the one you see at the bottom in red that is sql that's a very common and the, probably the simplest form of sql it's saying select star from employees select just means get me star means everything meaning uh, all the fields all five of them all the fields from the table employees this will return everything in that table all right now, what if we just want to get only 10, 10 employees, 10 rows? You do select star from employees, except we're going to add limit 10. This will only return 10 rows. Usually, you're going to use limit because you know the table can have millions of rows. Either use a limit or you actually most of the time you use some kind of uh, condition. A condition is when you use the where clause. So let's think about it. We want to get employees the join date is above a certain date. So you say select star from employees where join date is greater than or equal to 2015 January 1st. So in this case, out of the five people, it looks like everybody is, the join date is above uh, 2015 January 1st. So it will give us everything, but you get the point. You specify uh, some kind of uh, condition and you get the result. What if we want to get the, the number of um, employees that are active? Now we use a special uh, the, um, function called count. Select count star from employees where is active equals one. So now we're using another condition here where is active is one. So we're saying give us everything where the is active is set to one, but we don't want all the rows. We just want the count. We just want to know how many rows there are. So you do count star. You can also use combination of different conditions. Most of the time, that's actually what you want to do. For an example, you want to get all the employees that are still active and that were that joined before a certain date. So you will say select count star 
basically I we just want the, the number of employees that are still active from employees from that table where is active is one and the join date is less than 2016 whatever all right so this is very basic um, very basic query I hope that makes sense but when you when you actually go through a tutorial uh, you'll 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 learn a lot more now the example queries I showed is only one table but usually information is broken down in different tables for example this table has the employees join date basic info like name and if the employee is currently active or not most importantly it has the employees ID now there will be another table that have salary information for example or it could be another table that have benefits information or maybe another table that have vacation information each table is related to each other somehow most likely by the employee ID in this case. And when running queries, there is a way to join the tables. I do not want to get into the details of that, but you make sure you understand simple joins with whatever tutorial you do for SQLs. My number one recommendation is to do the tutorial on W3 schools on SQL. Their tutorial is great for beginners. And as a tester, that's all you need. You just need the basics. If you can complete the tutorial and pass the quizzes, then you should be ready to pass SQL related interview questions. Tester interview questions do not get complicated for SQL. The expectation is you should know the basics. Once you do W3 School tutorial, if you want to practice more, my recommendation is to install a database on your machine. Just try to Google around on different ways to learn, but my personal recommendation is to install uh, this thing called AMPS. AMS is a package that has a web server and database. In the future, it uses for so many other things. But it comes packaged, so it's simple. Then you just download a sample data, load the data, and you can just start running uh, queries and practicing. I hope you find this video information, inform informative, I mean. Add SQL to the list of things to learn. Again, you can do this in parallel while you're learning a programming language or while you're learning manual testing. But Please make sure this is one of the basic knowledge you do, but try not to get too deep into it because as a QA, nobody is expecting you to know too much about SQL. All right, let's move on.